This episode is brought to you by Toxic Associations. Now, as a black male millennial podcast host that doesn't give a fuck about anything he says, if there's one thing I know, it's toxic masculinity. I mean, at this point, I think I'm addicted to it. But that's because it's like bug spray for insecure people. Like, bitch be gone or something of that nature. But I know I'm toxic. Hell, I know my friends are toxic. And I will always defend my toxic friends and their toxic ways. But there's one thing I will not allow. And that's their toxic friends coming around me and being toxic. Take your fucking nasty ass contagious associates somewhere the fuck else. I don't care if you love them. I don't care if they're your oldest friend. I don't care if they're your fucking child. If they ain't my friend, they can't be toxic in my space. Fuck boys, wop bitches, and all you Karens, you can't sit at my table. Now let's start the episode. I'm sins and I'm sins and Welcome, welcome to episode 32 of the Absence Wolves Podcast, the podcast where a bunch of dumbass millennials talk about their dumbass perspectives, dumbass mistakes, dumbass complaints, and their dumbass opinions. I'm your host, Nelson. I definitely fucked up that order. <laughs> we'll let it slide. I got them all out. I'm your host, Nelson. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, shout out to all the new Pandora listeners, everybody that has recently joined us since episode 30 on Pandora. Thank you for joining this roller coaster of a doozy that we have called the Absence Wolves Podcast. Yeah. Welcome for some fuck shit. Um... <laughs> Shout out to Apple Podcasts because they are the biggest numbers on the analytical stats. Oh, like wow. most people are listening through Apple Podcasts and on iPhones. And I know all my exes have iPhones. So it's actually hilarious because that means they're some of our biggest contributors. So uh, shout out to my exes. Oh. And uh, if you think I'm talking about you when I'm shitting on my ex, I'm not talking about you. Y'all do what y'all want with that. Yo, we're not doing that. Stop. <laughs> also, don't give up hey, secrets. Hey, shout out to whichever one of you fuckboys ran up and told my ex about uh, <laughs> episode seven. Whichever one of my fuckboy audience members, first of all, appreciate the extra views. <laughs> you and you telling other people about it. But shout out to whatever fuckboy ran up and told my ex about episode seven because that was a year ago. And, you know, we had to have that conversation. We didn't have to, but, like, we, we decided to have it because we're adults. But the fuck boy that told her ain't. <laughs> so hold my motherfucking dick, all right? But thank you for the extra views. We appreciate you. That's what we're looking for. Uh, shout out 795 Production. I almost forgot about you. Gang, gang. It's okay. Nuts and bolts, man. Nuts and bolts. Every episode, every fucking time. Uh... Still got a couple more, but... Yeah, I'm thinking, can I squeeze me? I can squeeze me. Yeah, you definitely can. Nah, the, the last one... No, no, yeah, I no. can. I can get it in. Okay, yeah, we're good. As far as shout-outs, that's all I got. I'm going to choose my guest for today. <laughs> Return a guest... About, you got to plan ahead. You got to make sure you can, you know, insult people in casual conversation. Do you your, and do if you can't, thing, you got to say it earlier. Do your thing, sure. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm going to introduce my guest for today. <laughs> Return a guest from episode seven. What's up? Hi. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm good. How are you? How have you been? I have been tired. Just tired. That's oh, it. tired. Yeah. Unless you met tired. Like up. Because we know you got a kinky side. Anyways, um, <laughs> no name dropping this episode. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm just going to say that now so when you do it later on, we can all laugh. <laughs> and I'm not possibly gonna name make drop. a title out of it. I'm not going to name drop. I have absolutely zero fucking faith in you. But that's because I don't trust women. Wow. Nigga, right. we don't trust you either, the fuck? Good, because I ain't shit. But I accept uh, I'm, that I I'm ain't aware. shit. <laughs> I accept that I have moments in which I ain't shit. So When and, a nigga deserves to be treated in such a way. So do you feel like guys are the bad guy when they say they don't trust you? No, I think everybody's a bad guy. Everybody ain't shit. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Humans ain't shit. Like. <laughs> Facts. Uh, let's go and get into these topics. You brought some good ones with you today. Toxic femininity. Fe- femininity. Femi- <laughs> femininity. <laughs> Toxic femininity. 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 Yeah. Uh huh. It's an onomatopoeia or some shit like that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
You don't think it exists? I think it has the same ability to exist, oh but it doesn't. My fucking God. Let me explain. You sound like every bitch that talks about mansplaining. We'll come back to it. Nobody complains about toxic femininity like they complain about toxic masculinity. That's because it's, only the bitches are talking about toxic masculinity. Not Guys true. just don't care enough to say. Not true. Bruh. The niggas who just want to wear pink because they like pink and then they're told that they're not a man because they're wearing pink. What nigga is saying that in 2020? Plenty. Bruh, you're crazy. Bruh. We crushed that threshold in 2006. Look, it was an example, all right? It was a horrible example. Try again. Painting their nails. Straight men what wearing makeup. Their, what, what doesn't fucking matter. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I know someone who, what did he do? He did all black on one hand with one pink. All black on the other hand with one blue. Okay, he likes dick, but we're not questioning his But he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Point. Yeah, you're not putting pink fingernail polish on your finger. Why? It's a color. It's a color. Not even for breast cancer awareness month? It doesn't matter what fucking month it is. It's a color. The entire idea Look, that have colors have an association. Seat, I'm not pink and red because it's Valentine's Day. The entire fact that color has an association with gender is Bullshit. Because Color doesn't uh, me, have an association with gender, but how you wear it is probably a contributing factor. Pink is why? not a is no longer a feminine color. But it is if it's on your nails. Finger colored fingernails. Why? It could be fucking blue. Why? It could be baby blue. Why? Why? But is tell baby me why blue baby pink can't be on a man's nails without him being no gay? no baby color anything should why? be on a man's fingernails. Why? <laughs> it's just weird. Why? Okay. Give Talk me a logical answer. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't like where this conversation is going. <laughs> I don't like where this is going at all. It's literally. Well, unless I 100% agree. You're right. My opinion doesn't mean shit unless I 100% agree. Look, our society has taught us. By the way, I'm not shitting on anybody that uh, has pink fingernail polish. I'm just saying it's not something I would do. Also, comedy style. Go ahead. Our society has taught us that. There are certain things girls do to make them girls. Not from and these fake boys. fucking feminist bitches. Mm, no, no. Feminism is a completely different thing. It is completely different than, to than the toxicity of girls have to do this. Okay, example. You have a little girl and a little boy playing in a preschool. I wouldn't understand because I don't have Shut kids. the fuck up and listen. <laughs> You have. A I'm already girl. not allowed to speak about this because you put you put me in a position in which I would have kids and I don't have kids, so I don't understand. I didn't say that they were <laughs> yours. If you would have listened, <laughs> ahead, if I'm you sorry. would have listened, no, I had to get the smoke out real fast. But go ahead. Little girl, little boy, preschool, playing in the classroom. They're Are both they playing. White? Doesn't matter. They're does. why? Because if they were black kids, I would understand. But if they were white kids, I wouldn't understand because I don't understand what it means to be a white parent. Nigga, shut up. All right. <laughs> That's the last one. They're both playing with toy cars. Nobody says, oh, she can't play with that toy car because that makes her boyish. No. That no, makes no. her gay. You're absolutely wrong. But the moment wrong. that little boy picks up a Barbie You're doll, my son wrong. can't. No. You're absolutely Nigga, wrong. I worked in preschool and watched this happen. I'm Fuck a, you, mean I'm, I'm wrong. I'm a when, what year did you work in preschool? It was like two, three years ago. Okay, cancel culture. That's why. If a guy says that to it, hey, little girl, you're not allowed to wear the race car. Oh, my God, they're coming for his throat. But it's still okay. Cancel culture doesn't come for you if you tell a guy he can't play with Barbie dolls. But cancel culture comes from you if you tell a girl she can't do guy shit. You see why this is part of the problem. This is right? cancel culture, though. But you see why the gender norm of this is part of the problem, right? Yeah, but that's not it like everybody. It should not be. That's, it's, that's out of fear. I think kids, yeah, because men are fear. afraid of their sons being gay. No, 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 no. That's not what it Every is. Every man wants his daughter to be a lesbian because Facts. he doesn't want her getting fucked. Every. I just could care less either way. That's gonna bite me when I actually have children. I don't know. I got I got a question that because like even if you're a lesbian, you still might be. It ain't the same. I mean, in a, in, in a toxic masculine mindset, it's not the same because, you know, you a dog ass nigga and you know that a, you think that another female can't dog a woman the way a man can dog oh, yeah, a she, woman uh, sexually. Yeah, she can't come on her face like I can. Exactly. And no man and no man wants to see his <laughs> no man wants to think of that happening to his daughter. So they go, please yeah, let her daughter. be gay. Yeah. But I want to do it to somebody oh. else's. <laughs> <You're nasty. laughs> 
no man wants that to happen to his daughter. Facts. But no You're man okay wants with your son doing that. Well, yes. You're absolutely okay. Point. So what are you talking my about? My point is that no man wants his son to be gay. No man wants his son to be either treated that way or do that to another dude. No, nah, my son ain't coming on no nigga's face like that. Well, first of all, if my son is gay, he better be coming on those faces. <laughs> <laughs> you are the top, my nigga. All right? <laughs> you don't ever let another man come on your face. Don't, don't, don't demoralize you. Hey, like look. That. You come on his face. All right? Hey, he gets his empowerment the way he feels like it. No, I'm going to tell him how to be empowered as a gay person. How would you know how to be empowered as a gay person? You're I thought not we gay. were speaking vicariously through people. I thought we were allowed to speak on subjects that we didn't have any. I just, I just want to know what your like mindset was and how much you have thought about being the gay person in this situation. I know when I come like, on faces, it's empowering. But how do you know when her face isn't getting come on? It's empowering. Same, same way that you know. Because when I do it, she says yes more in that same. Okay, picture. that might empower her. Wow. The same way that some women feel like being a stripper or a hooker even, is empowering to them, while others look That's at them like, how, do, how right do you there. look at that as being that, empowering? That right there is toxic femininity. How? Only fans. Toxic femininity. Femin- femin- femininity. You're not gonna get I'm not going to get that word in the whole happen. episode. So, toxic fem. Sure. Your know, fem is derogatory, so I can't say that. Damn. Because cancer culture. You might have to learn how to say femininity. Yeah, that, I've been saying it the whole episode. Femininity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nemo. <laughs> But no, you're talking about, like, you're talking about more feminism than femininity. As in the things that make you feminine in the eyes of society. They can go hand in hand, but they're not the same thing. So two things can be correct. Can be, but aren't always. So in this situation, two things are correct. No. I don't know what the fuck this is. I don't know, I don't know what toxic femininity, femininity is. So toxic femininity, examples of toxic femininity... Always having to have your nails painted, eyebrows done, wearing makeup, you wear heels, you wear skirts, you wear dresses, you wear pink. All of the things But society- bitches think like that. They just don't think they need a man to provide it for. That's what empowerment, that's what the, this empower movement is. I don't need a fucking man. I can be this, this proper lady by myself. They're, they're still the same shit though. They're still saying, I gotta go out and wear a dress. I still gotta get my hair done. I gotta get this makeup on. But here's my shit. point about the toxic masculinity versus toxic femininity. Men are being shit on for being toxically masculine. Because y'all but are the, women are y'all getting are the voice shit of the on. world right now. Women. And y'all are not standing up for these men. That's why. I Maybe do. if y'all fucking stood up like y'all do for all these fucking woke white bitches that Bill Burr was talking about. Look, I stand up for my black men all of the time. Nigga, you can cry if you need to. That does not make you less of a man. Shit like that. So your son can play with Barbie dolls. Yes. My son can put on a fucking dress for all I give a fuck. Play dress up. You want to be a fucking princess since that's what society tells you is the coolest thing ever? Hey, nah, nigga, do you. If the why? dress looks why? like the one young thug wore, then I'm okay nah, with it. Nah, why does it matter? It was a hard dress. Why does it matter? It was a dope dress. Why can't it be Cinderella's Look, dress? my son can't be in an ugly dress, okay? Okay. That dress gotta be fire. Uh, of course it's gonna be fire. Okay. It's so gonna be in okay. Tiana's dress. That's why I said if it's... What? Tiana. Who? From Princess and the Frog. Whole time she was the a black frog. one. She was a frog the whole fucking Just because it's black doesn't make it okay with me. It needs to be a fire ass dress. She wasn't a fire ass dress. It was a little green joint at the end of the movie. Nah, fire ass dress. She was also like, thinking like, like a blue thug. one in the beginning. Like Young Thug. That was a fire ass dress. See, I was thinking more like Halloween costumes, like traditional Halloween costumes. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a character. Right. You can, you can wear whatever. If you want to look like fucking uh, Cinderella on fucking Halloween, by all means. But if you leave out the house on a regular ass day, if you want to prom, you better have a fire ass dress. <laughs> <laughs> My point is that it. So so let's say that's what your your teenage son decides is that one day he just wants to wear a skirt to school or dress to school, and his outfit is fire, but he's not gay. That's just what he wants to wear. Yeah. Society don't allow that shit. Because cancel culture doesn't want to attack that. You, re- you think that's what it I is? I think cancel culture is the driving force in how everybody maneuvers in today's society. So my problem... Except our sense of what's podcast because we don't give a fuck. My problem is that you have women who are allowed to wear skirts, dresses, sneakers, heels, pretty much whatever the fuck they want. Mm-hmm. And it has absolutely nothing to do with their sexuality. But that's a, that's a progressive thing. 
That's, but that's okay. my point. That's our society. Our okay, society so, looks at we're femininity. Progress. We're going to progress. All so right. just give us some time. No, hell no. Like, my son can't wear a non-fire ass dress. Can your daughter wear a non-fire ass dress? Yes. I want her to look as unattractive as fucking possible. See? Wow. <laughs> the double she will own no right fire ass dresses. The disrespect. I want my son to look So fire. your son can walk him. around looking all fuckable and shit, but your daughter can't. <laughs> Facts. She could look... As fuckable as she want on her own dime. So she got to go to school first and then she can move out. And then she can look fuckable. So she can't, hold on, so she can't have a job while she's in school so she can make money and buy her own clothes? Ooh. Oh, she can buy her own clothes. She just has to run them through me. Wow. To make sure they look like shit. Y'all see this sexism, There's right? <laughs> so much double y'all standard this, going on right y'all now. Y'all see this sexism, right? <laughs> so much double standard. I'm kidding. You're lying. Okay, you I'm, not. Kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm okay. kidding. I would assume that... When I finally have kids, because right now I can't talk about having kids because I don't have any. Nice. Um, but when I finally have kids, it would be because I found somebody that I plan to spend the rest of my life with and I hate three months after. But, um, uh, uh, okay, that's uh, the last one. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> but I would assume, because shit happens and people end up in awkward situations, but I would assume that I would end up with somebody that is going to carry herself in a respectful manner where she can both look attractive and not inviting and that she would teach those ideologies onto my daughter but i'm 30 so like a lot of the bitches i'm fucking with ain't going to the club anyway so it's like there's only but so much so inviting you yeah there's only but so many inviting outfits you still got and most girls only say at this age most girls say they're inviting shit for their dates mm-hmm. with their niggas yeah so, I get that. Shout out to you, nineteen-year-old TikTok bitches that Ooh. is out here wearing your post-marriage shit. Are you bitter? Every day, I'm just tired of Instagram right now because Instagram is now displaying all the reels, the the, the with the real shit. Mm-hmm. They're now forcing all the TikTok shit that I've actively been avoiding for the last four years. Mm. Because then they also change where the button, it, the the whole oh, button yeah, on that's fucking Instagram. Shit. So every time I hit the button, it's like, hey. Uh, I want to post something. It takes me to some fucking Becky that's 19 years old doing some stupid ass fucking dance. Yeah. Here's, I'm better. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm gonna need you to relax. Like Becky just trying to make it big out here. She's no. noticed that she has noticed that clearly all you have to do to be famous and get a nigga with money. Is be a cute enough skank on the internet. Wow. Is that not toxic femininity? A little bit. I feel like that's toxic. You like, you said just play a bitch's role and be cute. Just hush, twerk, and have a pretty face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now we cooking. <laughs> that's all you want to be and that's all you want hey more power to you um <laughs> be a kim kardashian of a yeah, well, I say I do with kim. <laughs> shout out to britney renner <laughs> but, uh yeah um they're part of the problem but going off of that, the feminist argument oh okay, that's a word i actually know how to say um <laughs> Yeah, right, which means. feminists are you talking about? New age feminists or actual feminists? I like where you're at. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm always talking about the fake feminist bitches. Oh, the which new are ones. the new, yeah, yeah, new age ones. I had explained it. They, uh, one of my coworkers was talking about it. She was like, oh, no, I'm a feminist. Those are feminazis. I was like, I'm definitely not calling it because it sounds more like flary if I say fake feminist bitches. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> fake feminist bitches. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, Add it's a the, little spat. It's, yeah, it's, the, it's the season <laughs> off the elbow. But um, uh, the thing that pisses me off about this feminist movement is me plus or uh, uh, equal plus. I don't know why I keep saying me plus because I keep trying to incorporate it to like a me too movement. But uh, it's equal plus. I talked about this with j mm-hmm. Women will make the argument that as a woman, I didn't decide to have the first of the month. So, tampons, I shouldn't have to pay for tampons. I 
I disagree. Obviously. <laughs> like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's like a guy walking We didn't to choose a... to grow fucking hair, but bitch, guess what? If you want to get it done, get it cut, whatever the fuck else, you got to pay for that shit, do it yourself, figure the fuck out. That's like a guy walking to Sports Authority. And, is Sports Authority still open? I don't think so. Dick Sporting Goods. Um, yeah. <laughs> ironic, because of what I'm about to roll into. Um, it's like a guy walking into Dick's and saying, I need a jock strap, but I shouldn't have to pay for it. Because I didn't choose to have this sensitive ass dick in between my legs. Wow. Yeah, no, that's fucking stupid. Yikes. That was aggressive. I meant sensitive because you need a, the, uh, the, to protect, like, sensitive in that way. I didn't mean sensitive like y'all. Yeah. Nigga, shut the fuck up. Look. Yeah, because if I had but one of you bitches on a clip, y'all be crying for fucking days. So shut Maybe up. you wish. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Moving on immediately. <laughs> But yeah, no, that's a, that's my biggest thing about these uh, a lot of the feminist arguments is like, I get equal rights, I support equal rights, I've said it many a times in the past, I support equal rights, but then when you're saying, you need to give me equal rights, you need to put me in the same positions, give me the same opportunities now as you give for men. Extra shit. No, just for you, same positions, same opportunities, mm-hmm. all that, you're asking for that, that's equal to me. But then you're saying, but also... That's where you lose me. Mm-hmm. I should be able to be in any position at work. Okay, fine. Construction company's hiring. Well, I'm a woman. I can't lift as heavy as a guy. Bitch, you just asked to be mm-hmm. able to work any job that a guy can work. I mean, some skinny ass niggas can't lift that shit either. I don't think Facts. that has anything to do with that. But that's I- an argument women have. It's, that's a really stupid argument, yeah. You I don't listen to feminists, fake feminists, do you? Oh, oh they're entertaining. Because they're stupid as fuck. Honestly, I stopped listening to them because my biggest issue is when you have... God, I can't even put it into words. It's... Just say what comes to mind. Yeah, nigga. I'm trying. And You're it's trying just... to be politically correct. Keep no, it's not that I'm trying to be politically correct. It's like... <laughs> A lot of the times, these, like these fake feminists, think that it means you have to act and be a specific way as a woman. Like the working woman shitting on the stay-at-home mom because I'm a feminist, so I work for a living. I don't rely on a man to take care of me, and I don't stay home and take care of my house and kids. Bitch, Isn't that what I said that's about her the toxic fucking choice. Femininity about how they 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 empowered working women. Yeah. And they would be the ones to shit on the stay-at-home wife. But working women don't automatically shit on the stay-at-home wives. It's the working women. It's the new age feminists. The fake feminists, bitches. The fake feminists who are working women. Who seem to think that being a feminist means that you have to go against all of the traditional ways of being a woman. Where it's no. Being a feminist means that you have the choice to do whatever the fuck you want. You have the choice I it to was just live. For equal opportunity. No, it's more than that. Of course, it's fucking. It, it is. It's it's being able to decide the way that you want to live because part of it is, you know, women are supposed to stay at home and take care of kids and raise children and blah 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 and keep, take care of the house. That's you know one way of thinking. And then you have the you know way. So it's not the action; it's the choice. Pretty like much. if you want to stay at home as a feminist, it would be your choice Absolutely. to decide whether you want to right. stay at home. Right, and so you have a bunch of these working feminists who are just like, oh my Fake god, feminist she, bitches. She stays home. She can't be a feminist because she she assists in the mindset of the men who put us where we were. That's what it is. Which is funny because most of these fake feminist bitches fall for the fuckboys every time. Like these fake feminist bitches will be the ones. That will go out and work every day it's like, and then have a nigga that sits at home and plays video games all day. And drives her car. Fast. Drops her off at work in her car so that he can leave, go back to the apartment, eat her food. Yeah, my woman's a feminist. She make all the bread. So Anytime you see a nigga with a Chevy Malibu, <laughs> it's not his. It's his white girlfriend's. So Yo, the person I was talking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I almost name dropped, but I didn't. <laughs> That means you got two more in you. <laughs> okay, so wait, I got a question though. Yvette from Baby Boy, was she a feminist? Because Jody didn't do shit. 
It's not that she was a feminist. She just won shit. She was just dignitized. That's all I was. Cohesive ain't shitness. She just neither Shout them out was to shit. My exes. That movie pissed me off. Honestly, I don't, mm-mm, nah. <laughs> that whole movie just pissed me off. <laughs> all bad. Like bitch. Yeah. No. That's a. What? That's that's a lot of like. I think the when it comes to men, the fake feminists are the stupidest because they make the same mistakes. All in an act to not be feminine. Yeah. All in an act to, I don't want to be the woman that the conservative Christian society told me I have to be. Mm-hmm. So I need to be the opposite, which means I'm just an ain't shit nigga like the other ain't shit nigga. Yeah. Congratulations. We're just You're a dumbass. Just like segue. I had a uh, conversation with uh, one of these dudes at the bar a couple days ago, and he was talking about, um, we were arguing about men and women. And because he was talking about situations he's gone through, and mm-hmm. he said, women learn from their mistakes faster than men. And I said, bullshit. Let me tell you why that's bullshit. Because if I see in your Tinder profile, no fuckboys, please, I know why I'm fucking. You haven't you learned. Picked that nigga <laughs> you picked that nigga the same. You picked that over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. It's bad when you have to disclaim. But when you have to disclaim, and I know I'm still going to win, <laughs> it's worse. It's like, ooh, that's the one. Pick her, pick her. Bruh, if a guy puts in his Tinder, no ratchet bitches, please, he's probably not answering DMs from ratchet bitches. He really means that. Yeah. There's not a trap. That's a mistake. That's the difference. With women fall for traps. Guys fall into mistakes. That's the way I want to word it. Okay. The fuckboy trap is a trap. It really is. But a- when a guy dates a ratchet bitch. You want to know why, though? Why? Because fuckboys have charm. Ratchet bitches ain't got no charm. Just- oh, so they're easier to turn down. Mm-hmm. So flawed women are easier to turn down than flawed men. I didn't make the and rules. And that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make the rules. It's easier for men to learn from their mistakes. <laughs> Look, I, I can't argue the logic. Men, and especially fuckboys, I've had my fair share. They That's are charming sure. as fuck you. <laughs> they are charming as fuck. They can they smooth talk you all the perfect ways. Ratchet bitch just a ratchet bitch. I was about to say these wild you, bitches are not charming. They just imme- they immediately turn it on. They don't have like, a oh, personality. Shit. Nope. The most of them just got body and dance moves. And as soon as they open their mouth, you know she's a ratchet ass bitch, Tracks. and you know to run away. Tracks. You just but the teeth. yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Their teeth. <no. laughs> What's ratchet bitch teeth look like? Butter. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just a mess. Like, oh man! Like I'm mad how they go. Oh my god! Out. I got this beautiful ass Colgate smile. Anyways, I'm mad how they go out and they get their bodies on, but they won't get their teeth fixed. Bro, like, all right. Like, nope, don't one. do it. <clears throat> I mean, he's right though, because it. I man, know some bad bitches with some fucked up teeth. How much money are you spending on makeup? How much money are you spending on your teeth? I mean, how much money are you spending on your hair? Guess what, bitch? I use Crest 3D. Mm-hmm. Look, I know bitches. <laughs> and I, electric toothbrush. I know bitches who spend. And it's cheaper than your makeup. Hundreds of dollars a week to make sure that they always look good. They out here buying cars, out here buying houses, spending money on everything but their teeth. Bitch, you been had time. You been had the money. Bitch, you got military money. <laughs> you ain't doing. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. Either. Your confidence must be on Pluto, cause goddamn. Oh, so you mean non-existent? Okay, got it. You know what though? You know, what? Makes, it makes sense though, because like a lot of women, especially these ratchet bitches, because I, I will say, first of all, cancel culture. I'm going to get that shit out right now. Um, women. Majority of y'all don't have personality. A majority of y'all. Say them, not y'all. I'm not included in that shit. A majority of women don't have personality. Mm-hmm. So, if you ain't got nothing to talk about, fuck you need to open your mouth for anyway. When she's sucking your dick, <laughs> you want I'm that looking shit? looking at her teeth when she's sucking my dick. If I'm looking at her teeth while she's sucking my dick... You looking at her face? That means her head is garbage because my eyes should be rolled in the back of my head. 
You right? <laughs> so. Unless you're one of those men who like to like have a bitch look in your eyes when you're getting your dick sucked. So I'm like that shit. But I'm not, I'm looking in her eyes, not her teeth. But you can't see her teeth when her mouth is open? No, bruh. Shit, that, that shit would have distracted me. Nigga. <laughs> How do, oh my God. I fall, and you want to talk about a trap I fall into. It's the ugly chin bitches that got pretty eyes. Oh man, I be sitting there so stuck in conversation and then like I got to take two steps back. But, oh shit, crimson chin? Like, what's going on over there? <laughs> I fall for that trap every time. Like, I, I was like horse dividers. Bruh. Yeah, or horse blinders. Yeah, it's Bruh. like that. I just looking into the eyes, and then when I step back, I look at the facial features. And I'm like, you damn, gotta, no fucking You need ears to evaluate. <laughs> it's a damn shame. But I talk to a lot of people, so that's why like I don't I don't start to notice certain things until after we're halfway through the conversation. Mm. I don't approach people because they're attractive. I talk to people and then realize they're attractive during conversation. Oh, isn't that nice? I don't like talking to ugly people. <laughs> Perks of being a host. Is it a perk? Yeah. To talk to ugly people? Ugly people have better personality. Because they don't have anything to offer. Yeah. Shit. Ugly bitches got better teeth than mm, good looking bitches. I don't know bitches. about that. I don't know about that. Because, you know, I tried it with an ugly one. And you know what? Personality one shit either. As a guy. That's what I'm talking I tried it with a dude. Yes. So only so it's only a ten, it's a it's a one out of ten game anyway. <sighs> ugly bitches. That's why that's why all the cute girls got that one dupe fat friend. Because mm-hmm. she's the life of the party. She's the personality. The cute bitch just wanna laugh. I've seen it. Where's the life? What are you looking for in a Where's relationship? Just make me laugh. Yeah, that's literally it. That's what it took me a while. I thought like I used to think that. The cute girls would keep the the fat bitches around because it made them look better. But, like, no. It gave their group more energy. More personality. Hmm. Cute girls have garbage personality. So you're saying their fat friend is a generator to keep them alive? To keep their energy going? Are you making a joke about what you do for me? Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) I made that very personal. Disrespectful (laughs) ass. Uh, it's okay without me none of this will be possible so alright and for the episode 32 part of the week <laughs> definitely 30 minutes early but fuck you for the episode 30 second now <laughs> um, but yeah but that's fact okay shit you've never realized it um I think I've ignored it because I'm the fat friend <laughs> That's why I picked it out so easily. Like, I relate to it so much. I was like, shit, hold up. I am the fun one. I'm hold the- on a second. That's why I came up with the generator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cute, but I'm the fat friend. So where does this put me? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, like. Where does this put me? <laughs> I'm cute, but I'm but real shit. Where does that put me? But real shit. Real shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so real shit. If you're the fat one in your group, I would never say that because I love you to death. But if you are the fat one in your group, and the guy, <laughs> yikes! <laughs> Look, I knew the position in the outfit wasn't flattering, so I just got to roll with it. <laughs> For those of you that are just audio listeners, she just tapped her tummy. That's that's what that noise was. You know, it sounded like two combo drums in the background, but it was really her stomach. <laughs> that was her fucking stomach. But anyways, um, when if you're the fat one in the group, mm-hmm. and you go out with your friends, mm-hmm. who are all supposedly the cuter ones. Skinny cute ones, huh? Yeah, you do have a lot of skinny cute friends. No, you got some fat bitch friends, too. <coughs> um, they don't listen to the podcast. It's cool. And they, but they're, they're all dead. pretty. I'd fuck half your friends, even the fat ones. You I just have. Wow. <laughs> Think about it. Yikes! Abort! Abort! Abort mission! Okay. I have fucked half your friends. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't say shout out to my exes because I never dated none of them. Not a damn one. <laughs> Not a damn one. 
<laughs> he yeah. said, let me smash this real quick, and then you're not seeing me Facts. for two months. And then I'm going to smash it again. There was a time when Sarah was a great wingman. We're still working on that. She's garbage at it now, but there I'm, was a time I'm when she used to be. I'm far away. Shut up. Anyways, um, if you're the fat one in your group, mm-hmm. and all the other bitches are the cute ones, most of the time when the guys come over, they're talking to you. They're like hovering around the girl that they want, but most of the conversations with you. Shit. And that's my TED talk for today. I mean, it's it's it explains <laughs> so much. It really does. It explains so much. Cause I'd be like, damn, I know I'm fat, but I'm cute. What the fuck is going on? Cause you're the in. Like you're the in into fuck the situation. Them bitches. I, no, I ain't doing that shit no more. I'm about to be dry as hell. And see, this is what I'm talking about. We're working. On it. We're gonna get back. We're gonna get back to the way she used to be. Don't worry, y'all. But no, you're the in. Like you're the you're the the assistant icebreaker. So basically, what you're saying is I need They're to start hanging out with bitches like fuck twice my size. Say what? I said. So what you're telling me is I need to start hanging out with bitches who are like twice my size, and then they'll talk. The guys will talk to them, but they'll want me. Now, I'm not saying, like, every guy in the bar is going to want you. They do. <laughs> Nigga, you ain't about to kill my confidence on this. Bro, I'm not trying that. to kill you. That was your words. <laughs> I was trying to be delicate as fuck. If you was anybody else, I'd dog your ass out, though. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. But, um, yeah, no, if, yeah, it's because, like, usually the supposed least attractive which is funny because the, the supposedly least attractive person in the group is usually the one that's getting fucked. Yeah, I will never understand it. Yeah, the fat friend's I've, always getting fucked. I've literally... Because guys like a good personality. We'll make the sacrifice. We'll go home at 2 with a 10 and wake up at 10 with a 2. I've heard that. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me. Is that your stomach or your, your mouth? Yes. <laughs> doesn't matter it's irrelevant um, but no i've i've definitely always wondered how that happens like there were better bitches you guys are attracted to a nice personality just like like y'all fall for the fuck boy trap we fall for the fat girl trap if she's got a nice personality we'll be like all right fine just can't take her home to mom also, now my numbers make sense walk. say what fat girls got that walk I'm on the fence. <laughs> really? That's a shot. Stop. <laughs> That's a shot. Stop. What? Are you, what? <laughs> but anyways, um, you brought up a good point where you, uh, a good topic where you said, um, I'll let you get into it. Weaves for men. Weaves for men. Get it your smoke all, off. Look. I feel like I'm going to slightly contradict myself in my opinion on this. Well, that's what you bitches do. Double standards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. I support it. I do. I support it because I don't believe that there's any logical reason as to why women are the only ones who are allowed to enhance themselves to feel confident in themselves. Like, I don't know when, who decided that. Women are allowed to do anything to make themselves look and feel better about themselves, but men just have to be happy with who you are. I don't get that. That don't make no fucking sense. Do you, boo-boo? But like at the same time, if I have a nigga coming up on me and I go to grab his beard and that shit comes off in my hand, that's going to be a fucking problem. <laughs> like, that's going to be a problem. Has that happened to you before? No, but what I saw I this say, video you know, and they like, glue, they like glue a beard onto his face. And I'm like, bitch, if that shit comes off when I try to pull your beard... That's a problem. You want to know why? Um, why that? Why? Comparatively, Com- I'm trying to think about how to word this properly. Not politically correct, because I can give a fuck. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> if a guy spends more time working on that kind of stuff, the less he has to pay. Because that's a lot of feminist, fake feminist bitches' arguments. I spent all this money on my hair. I spent all this money on my makeup. My dress was expensive. Why should I have to pay for the night? Bruh. That's so fair. if a guy dyes his hair, tapes on his beard, and then puts on a fire-ass dress, you're buying all the drinks, bitch. <laughs> this is why I swore off women. <laughs> 
Like y'all bitches be beautiful and bad and soft and, and still nitty as fuck. God, y'all get on my fucking nerves. If you choose to do your hair. If you choose to get your nails done, if you choose to buy a whole new That's fucking dress. That's a service to the guy. No, the fuck it's not. You did I that know to that. <laughs> bitch, you did but that for yourself. <laughs> look, look. I will show up to a first date. Half As the fat friend. <laughs> I will be the fat friend. Look, I'm, I may not even, I didn't even put makeup on for my, my last first date. No makeup. My hair is my hair. I'm trying to lock it. So it just looks like this. There's nothing. You get what you get. I spend more time looking good for this podcast than I do for these bitches. Bro, like, I don't <laughs> care about y'all niggas. I don't. Facts. <laughs> like, I care about my audience more. I care about these hoes. I just, True. like, I, I might like you. Sure. But I'm not going to sit here and try to give you some perfect little primmed up example mm-hmm. of who I could be. Nah, bitch. You about to see me in my fucking leggings, this t-shirt, my fucking fake ass of boots, and call it a fucking day. Because this is how you're going to see me almost every day anyway. Ooh. And you're going to like my ass nice and cute like this, or you can fuck off. I'm not putting on no goddamn dress. I can't sit comfortably. I don't sit like a lady. I don't want to do that shit. You're mad spreading like a motherfucker. Or- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're just gonna blur that part out. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, I. Hold on, hold on. Why you gotta blur that? I ain't got a dress on. I ain't showing nothing. Get dick, what, women nigga. <laughs> That's what you showed. <laughs> the dick prank just like showed now, my thigh. Just now, Jesus, shit. But seriously, that's exactly why I, I cannot act upon my love for women because that whole mindset mm-hmm. just pisses me off. I've had a conversation like, with... Uh, you decided to put in that money. Why the fuck should he have to... First of all, now I will say, I, I, don't, I don't do Dutch uh, on like the first few dates, but like in a relationship, 100%. What is Dutch? When you like split the bill. This bitch. I don't. Nigga, you might not ever see that nigga again. You're going to leave him with like... A overdraft credit card. If you ask me out on a date, that's on you. And but this here's is why the thing. women need to start Hold asking on. more guys out on dates. Exactly. I have absolutely no problem being like, so um, you want to go see a movie? I'll pay. I don't care. Thanks. I want to spend time with you. That's cool. Oh, I don't take these bitches out to expensive dates on the first date anyway. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah no, take you, that bitch you, to Chick-fil-A. She'll be all right. First of all, I would never. You're not going to Chick-fil-A with me unless we're dating. <laughs> Okay. Bitch, that's a luxury. Yeah, that is like Chick Fil A. You get some fucking luxury. Taco Bell. Close on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would never take a girl unless we're dating. You would never go to Chick Fil A with me. But I will take them to Outback Steakhouse. Nigga, not What's this wrong again. with Outback not, Steakhouse? Not this again. <laughs> What's wrong? I like that book. I that's my first date place. Oh, wow. I, I have a I have a trifecta when it comes to first dates. Oh, Shout out to every girl that's listening to this that's been a part of this trifecta. <laughs> Fooled <ya. Bitch. laughs> you. You fell for the fuck boy trap. <laughs> like, <laughs> knew exactly what to do. But no, I'm telling you, I'll back to you. I'm like, I'm good. Roller skating. Cold stone. Damn. That's, that's my good, trifecta. That's a good trifecta. Mm-hmm. Okay. In that order. But I always got to make sure that the outback is spaced out far enough from the, the roller rink. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want you to eat and then ten minutes later you're on skates. Yeah, it's so not gonna feel great. I space it out, make sure the location's right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but I, I same same trick. All women get them every time, don't? Yeah. It? Fuck boy trap. Easy. Yet. It's not even fuck boy. I'm taking you out to three different fucking locations. Be that's a pretty. That's for a date. That's pretty fucking solid. Because mm-hmm. I I'm gonna see you in three different elements. Yeah, I'm going to see how you are at dinner in a social environment. I'm going to see how you are in an interactive environment. And then I'm going to see how you close the night. That's what the Cold Stone's for. It's the only reason I'm taking you for ice cream. I'm going to see how you're going to close this night. Honestly, and plus, out there isn't that cheap, but it's not that expensive. Either. It depends. You if know what's I really- get a fucking T-bone, <clears throat> and that, if I get a sirloin, and that bitch gets a red eye, she's paying. Yeah. <laughs> you don't outstake me at a steakhouse. What's really, what's really throwing me about this, fucking two guys ago, this guy takes me out on a date. There was never a second. So was this last week? No. Nah, it was a couple oh, months that ago. That was a shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. We'll um, 
just like the, the, I'm comparing the amount of planning that goes into now, obviously you're planning, you plan it because you have a goal. This guy ain't shit. Not an end goal, but a process. But, right. It's, yeah. it's a process, but it has a purpose. I plan is what to I mean. be leaving this place at this time, going to the next place at the next time. Right. There's still like there's a purpose to mm-hmm. what you're doing. This dude had none. It was, uh, yeah. So I don't know where you want to eat. There's a bunch of places around here, and um, he decided on Chipotle, and then nothing. Had no idea what to do after, but sit in the car and talk. And just have nice conversations. Which is weird because oh no wait you're, you're the fat girl so you do have personality. Never mind. A great conversation, cool. But the lack of planning, the lack of purpose, of it was just like oh okay yeah, and then of course, you want to just go back to my no motherfucker. I don't. That's why that's why no. guys would do the 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 ten o'clock like scoot up when they go to the bar and try to be out by ten o'clock because they're trying to like. After you're already at the place that they hope you're going to be at the last place tonight, they're trying to squeeze you out of there. Mm-hmm. So you don't make other plans. Because what if this guy takes you on some fucking 2 o'clock in the morning adventure? Because he didn't get you out of the bar fast enough. Mm-hmm. Guys are horrible at that. Especially if being spontaneous. And it's, it's <clears throat> in defense of all guys, I will say it's hard being spontaneous with women. Mm-hmm. It's very hard being spontaneous with women. I can understand that. Because now if I take you to fucking Popeye's, after we leave the bar, and you're a KFC bitch. You can't be my bitch, but like, you're a KFC bitch. And it's like, well, I, I was trying to do something cute. I was trying to get you some food. You had a long night. I know you're hungry. You want to get something to drink before we go back to the house or wherever the fuck I'm about to take you. And you're over here bitching because you want a chicken sandwich instead of a famous bowl. I can't imagine how badly I would want to slap a bitch for complaining about some shit like that. Yeah. Food. Free food. Bruh, like, do you know how happy I get to be fed? But she spent all that money on her hair and her makeup and her dress and just showing up. And then... Maybe that's my problem. Like, this this nigga used to feed me and I can't tell you how happy... Like, I was just grateful. I'm being fed. Yeah, you might be that fat friend. I'm that, I'm, <laughs> I'm that fat friend. He would, like, literally, the, the amount of joy. And he would do it because of how happy it made me. Like, I'm being fed. It's a whole love language. But see, you're that is not a fucking <laughs> love language. Don't you get me riled up on that. Oh my god. Acts of service. But then gifts. That's not how. Stop. Food. Is, <laughs> food is two love Cooking languages is at an once. Act of service. Delivering food is a gift. That nigga stopping by McDonald's on the way home is not a love language. It's a love language. What's my love language? Tacos and tequila. You ratchet bitch. <laughs> You're the same as most Margaritas of the Republican bitch. white guys that want to build the wall. We are not. <laughs> I mean, we can we can go political no, we're not. if we want to we're go not. political. But you know, I don't like politics on my show. But um, yeah, no, that's it's like no, it's it's it's, it's, it's not a love language. Is it? <laughs> it's not a fucking love language. It's a gift. But um, he brings me food. That's a gift. Yeah, no. He goes I, out. Okay, the dude that the last date that I went on, guy I'm currently talking to, mm-hmm. I was at work late. What's his name? Don't worry about it. All right. That was yeah. a test. She passed. <laughs> no no name drop. One more. <laughs> she, she took out one more. On I'm Monday, sure she would get it out. Monday, I worked very late, and he was already home. And I was talking about how hungry I was. Y'all live together? No. You said already home. He like, was home. I was going to the same no, place. No, he was just home in his home. He was home. He was already at his house. Already at his house. Mm. When you say already home, doesn't that sound like y'all live together? Yeah, but I need You were to working work. late and he was already home. Okay, I can In see context, why you think that. In context, that sounds like... Okay, yeah. no. He was at his house. I was just trying I to figure out if I had work. another background check on another nigga. I mean, you can. Oh. I already know he's been in jail. Anyways, oh. um, we can talk about that later. <laughs> we can talk about that later. Anyways. Teetering. Um, That's teetering on the name dropper right there. You're giving out too much information. Anyways, um, <laughs> he got out of bed to pick up food for me. Oh, and not, oh so he it. wasn't in bed in his jail cell. All right, all right. No. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. He got out of bed to get food for you. And brought it to me at work. That's a love language. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're in agreement. Bring no, because language. I've had girls that I've made 
breakfast for first thing in the fucking morning. Yeah, love language. And she's like, I don't like food as soon as I wake up. So that's I not her love up. language. That's your That's why I'm saying it's hard to be spontaneous as a guy. Oh, yeah, 100%. I'll be yes. saying food is love language. All right. <laughs> I cannot with this nigga tonight. <laughs> Are you hungry, ain't you? <laughs> Guess what? You're starving tonight, bitch. <laughs> I say bitch very loosely, comedy style, okay? He's called me so much yeah, worse. I just called her so much worse, but not to mention we have fucking 15 years of friendship here, so hold my fucking dick. Also, she had an issue with it. Believe me, she would speak up. But anyways, um, <laughs> my biggest thing is uh, when we talk about these relationships, guy perspective and girl perspective mm-hmm. is guys and girls can't do the same shit. No, they cannot. And if a guy does something that a girl does, it changes the conversation. Like what? Me Too movement. Hmm? Be more specific. That was reactive as fuck. I just need you to be more specific. Oh, well, no, I was like, just throwing that one out. Anybody that understood that got that one. <laughs> like, if a guy posts a half naked picture on social media. Okay. What do you think is the. Fuck boy. Oh. If a woman pass a, posts a half naked picture on social media. Confidence. Liberation. Yeah. Um, I personally disagree, but I think that society would agree with your statement. You with the society word. You're right in that train. Not today, huh? <laughs> You're right. Look, I mean, I've seen dudes who post pictures of like their uh, their progress. They're confident because they go to the gym and they've never never looked better than how they are. So yeah, they're confident in their bodies because of what they've done with it. Fuck boy. I don't think that makes them a fuck boy. I don't either because I posted half naked pictures and I had women call me out about say, "Oh, you're one of those guys." (laughs) But then when you when they do the fucking the half tatas with the uh, uh, with the tatas out, but they got their back towards the fucking camera. I'm talking about I'm all free to the world and shit. If I say you're a fuck girl, then I'm a bad guy. Because you sound jaded. I'm you very sound, jaded. You sound mad because she's showing the world her but tits, but not you. Don't put me in a fucking box. <laughs> don't <there. laughs> Oh, so the world got to see your titties, but I got to I see your back, see bitch. No, I did. It was on Pornhub. Shout out to Mac and Cheese. Wow. Thought I forgot I about didn't that see that one. Thought I forgot about that no, one. New <laughs> shout out on the podcast. But anyways, um, no, like it's, it's two completely different conversations. Mm-hmm. If I'm a guy wears something tight, he's trying to show his dick. If a girl wears something tight, she's trying to be, you know, professional. I feel like if a guy's wearing something tight, I don't think it's because he wants to show his dick. I, I don't know. It, it's more like. I've, I've never seen a dude in tight pants where you can see a dick print. Bruh, if you see a dick print in anything, tight. Nah, I've seen baggy sweatpants with a dick print. Tight. That's They're tight, tight around the waist. They're loose around the ankles. Pause. Wow. <laughs> I just Big pause. I just, I just, I just that. All right. We're rolling with it. All I know is when niggas walk around in them gray sweatpants, they be nice and loose. They don't have to be tight, but you can see that print. When you say a man in tight pants, I'm thinking of niggas in like skinny jeans. No, no, no I'm not talking about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, no. Ain't nobody seeing your dick print, honey. Yeah, no, it's I'm talking about It's probably tucked like, between your cheeks. No, I'm talking about like tighter, like... <laughs> wow. Tighter fitting loose gear. Okay. Or more spandexy gear. Okay, yeah. Dick print. What's wrong with that? It's sexualization. We're trying to show off our dick. Okay. How many times do you see guys wear shit like that and think they're trying to show off their dick? Like every time. Okay. So, but every time I see a woman in a fucking tight dress, I don't think she's trying to show off her fat pussy. Wow. Can you see her pussy in her dress? Some of these bitches I can. Hunty. No, we'll tell you a compliment. Okay. Having a fat pussy is a compliment, though. Okay. Um... I don't see a problem with either. You want to show your tight pussy, show your tight pussy. You want to show your dick print, show your dick print. But society can eat a dick. <laughs> the nigga just mad because he can't have the tight pussy and the bitch just mad because she ain't getting no dick. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> Look. Okay. Running off that, who gets more slack for, who gets more leeway on sexual comments in a public space? 
women have so much more leeway. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Complete double standard. I am I am a huge advocate for men when it comes to shit like this. And that's that can run into a very deep, touchy subject. That's touching it. But, we got time. <clears throat> Wait, are you talking about personal experience? No. Oh, okay. We're not going to talk say, about personal experience. Here comes the name. No, we're not going <laughs> to do that. Um, no, just the this weird idea that a lot of people truly have that women can't sexually harass men, women can't abuse men, women can't rape men. On top of always believe women no matter what. Let me stop you right there and put this one statement out. I personally have had my dick brushed or my ass rubbed in public by stranger, strange strange women, uh, stranger women, women that I do not know, more times than I have smacked a girl's ass who I did not know. Because the only time I'm smacking a girl's ass who I do not know is these stripper bitches. And it's completely acceptable because society says. But nonetheless, women will definitely sexual assault me before. And I ain't shit. That's what makes it worse. <clears throat> but I definitely don't walk up to no stranger in the fucking bar and like you know grab her by the pussy. Because if you do, I'd be pressing it. All she. Has to do. <laughs> you need yes. Jesus. Four six. Wait, four seven. <laughs> wait, no, Kanye and Melina Trump. So four eight. <laughs> you need Jesus. I do need Jesus, but he got me on hold and he's had me on hold since I was twelve. So. Oh fuck. Y'all lost, not mine. Wow. Oh. Okay. Okay, so um, <laughs> about about these bar instances. Um, I remember being uh, down in Fredericksburg at a bar once, uh, Aladdin's, back when we all used to go like every freaking weekend. Teetering on the name dropping. No, I'm not. Mm-hmm. And a friend, who will not be named, uh, had was dancing with some guy. She was in a skirt, and he reached around. Mm-hmm. And grabbed her by the pussy. Grabbed her by the pussy. President he Kwan trumped right her. There. He trumped her. That needs to be Your words, not mine. That needs to be the same, honestly. Oh, yeah. He trumped her. After the uh, um, And of course, yeah. I catch her reaction. Uh, she says... It went like... No. <laughs> it wasn't was a bad good. way. Not was... a good way. No. Can you stop? Can you... Deeper. <laughs> Ew, what the f- No. Yo, you gotta chill. We are you, talking about sexual harassment here. You have to chill. Yeah, but I didn't get the inside one off. <laughs> right. right. So, uh, he trumped her. He trumped her. Your words she not reacts. I react. We start screaming and hollering and all that. He obviously, he gets thrown out of the bar. Wait, what do you mean we start screaming and hollering? What? And it, we were screaming at him. <laughs> Just like that. Exactly. <laughs> Just like that. Um, and he gets thrown out of the bar. All right. That would literally never happen the other way around. Girl reaches around and grabs a dude's dick. First of all, he's not going to start screaming and hollering. And even if he does, <laughs> even if he does, all the men around him are going to start calling him a bitch and saying, why are you upset? You should like it. You should enjoy it. You're getting attention. I never thought about it like that. You know what's so crazy? I attacked this conversation so many times, and I never thought about how guys act when, if a guy bitches about sexual assault. Mm -hmm. I always think about how women will react in sexual assault because I enjoy attacking women. I think it's the absolute worst. That's a joke. I don't enjoy attacking women. It's just very easy to do. That's also a joke. It's not easy to attack women. It's hard. I just always find a way. My God. Disclaimer, it's always a joke. <laughs> it's comedy style. <laughs> um, but yeah. But yeah, no, I think men are the absolute worst because they show no support. And men look... Well, how did you make this a guy problem? Maybe and women should stop not... fucking grabbing our dicks in the middle of the bar. 100%. 100%. I'm just saying that another problem... Men don't care as much... fucking next? Believe it or not, oh. men do not care as much about how the women think in these situations as they do the men think in these situations. 
Men don't want to be judged by their friends or judged by their, their brothers or their father as being seen as a pussy because you complained about some girl grabbing your dick. They care more about that opinion than a woman's. Mm. That's why they don't say shit. That's why women have this twisted idea that men don't get raped as much. Bitch, are you serious? They don't. Nah, she's getting her smoke off. She's got it. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Look, it's it's hella unfortunate. I mean, you're right because there is a, a stigma where like, you know, you're not gonna go home and tell your dad, "Hey, this guy." I mean, hey, this girl grabbed my dick while I was at the bar, and I felt really uncomfortable. Especially not me because I don't talk to my dad. Because shout out to my nice, it's a biological father. But there it is. But <laughs> you're right. There's a stigma in society where, like, as a guy, you should welcome that kind of shit, mm-hmm. but never implement it. Mm-hmm. That's I fucking hate people. <laughs> I just fucking hate it all. <laughs> and then, God forbid, you put the twist on it. She of a man, you first? A, no, oh. a man actually being sexually assaulted by another man. He's never admitting Bruh, to that shit. I'm snitching on a nigga sexually assaulting me <laughs> before I snitch on a bitch and so sexually assaulting me. No. I'm 100%. I'm like, yo, that dude tried to put his finger in my butt. I felt uncomfortable. I'm going to at least let the girl get her finger in my butt and then be like, all right, she went too far. She tried to put two. <laughs> no, but. I'm the- definitely snitching on a guy sexually assaulting me before. Here's, but here's the big difference and why most men won't. Because your friends your cousins, your brothers, your father, whoever, are going to say, you let a man overpower you? Fuck yes. I'm a short ass. I'm 5'9", nigga. That nigga was 6'2". <laughs> if he's 5'7", he ain't putting no fingers in my butt. But if he's 6'2", he got longer reach. <laughs> so I'm scared. So <laughs> That's a joke. Oh, That's my a God. Joke. Joke. But you see my point. Yeah, no, I get, I get your point. No, I, I don't, I, I personally don't understand because I've never been a guy to like complain about a woman before I complain about. But I'm you want to know what it is? Guy first. Toxic masculinity. Fuck you. That was, uh, good. That was a good callback. Thank but you. fuck you. <laughs> Full circle. That was a good callback. That's exactly what it is. That the man has to be, because if a man admits that a woman sexually assaulted him and he felt uncomfortable. His power is taken away in that situation. And the man always has to have the power, right? Fuck no. That's why I'm saying I'm snitching on a guy first. Because if he takes that power from me, I'm getting that bitch back in court. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting that bitch gotcha, back bitch. in court. You ain't taking that power from me. Oh, yeah. Because the one thing they're not going to do in court is say that you asked for it or bring up whether or not you were drunk or if you had on a skimpy outfit like they do to women. Cause... Nice. How did you just fucking flip that whole conversation Ooh. over? Ooh. That's all I called me. They me too, and I I, I, I I saw it coming in, and I was just like, <laughs> okay, she's talked long enough, and she hasn't brought up that dumb shit, so okay, maybe we, maybe we can make it throughout the whole thing. But instead of name dropping, she dropped bullshit. <laughs> Realistic bullshit, no okay. bullshit nonetheless. <laughs> hey, I didn't make... Bullshit for the sake of the argument that we were having. I didn't make society like this. I feel like you're pushing their agenda. Anyways, last topic you wanted to touch on, which is... Political views mm. and affecting relationships. Yes. Don't ask me who the fuck I voted for. If you're my you're fucking not. wife, die knowing I'm not the same as you. Alongside of me. Okay. <laughs> what? I, I don't... That's how I feel. hundred percent. Like straight like that. That's how I feel. Be buried next to me. Of course later because guys die first. But um Because they want to. They have to win. They have to be first at everything. Wow. How did y'all turn this into? I'm just no, so we're good not at it. Doing I'm this. just so good at it. No, die next to me because I think a man should always be married. I mean, buried next to his wife mm-hmm. because you know I plan on getting in relationships where I spend the rest of my life with somebody specifically. But I wouldn't understand. Never mind. Um, <laughs> I said never mind. But um, and I hope that you 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 lay next to me after me. And go off into heaven while I'm up in heaven, still not knowing who I voted for. So you think political conversation should just completely stay out of a relationship? Yes. Why? Because it starts unnecessary arguments. 
My thing about like, here's my big thing about, and I hate talking about politics. So, but I'm gonna I'm gonna let this one slide. My thing about politics is very weird. I think if you vote, if I vote for, my mom just asked me if I was stocked up on toilet paper and paper towels because there's a food shortage about to happen. Nonetheless, um, that's why I got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to moms. you bring me a roll. Like, <laughs> shout out to moms who care. <laughs> but shout out to the dads that don't. Or not shout out to them. <laughs> but anyways, my thing about political views is um, if you're 18, mm-hmm. if you're 18 and Barack Obama's your guy, mm-hmm. and I'm using him as an example because culture will only allow me to use him as an example without, you know, trying to make mm-hmm. be the bad guy. If Barack Obama's your guy and you side by everything he says, mm-hmm. you are hundred percent Barack behind Barack Obama. Every policy you want implemented at the age of nineteen, if you're thirty two and Barack Obama is still your guy, not predominantly, I'm talking all around, still your guy. And you want every policy that he is trying to implement. You haven't grown up. Mm-hmm. And I think marriages work in a sense of you're both growing mm-hmm. at different levels, different paces, different ways. You're growing together, but it's not like it's in sync, but not cohesive. It's cohesive, but not in sync. Yeah, That's the way I'm looking for it. So I think certain things that you pay attention to. As you grow older and you grow up, changes. Your outside view. You might feel one way about how your household should be ran, but you may feel differently about how like the outside world works. And that's irrelevant to your marriage. Right. Because you both feel that your marriage right. should what be What works written. for you exactly. isn't necessarily what how so, the world should work. Okay. But that would lead to an argument. If you think these people should get this and he uh, 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 and he thinks these people should get that, that leads to arguments and it's like Nigga, all we care about is our household. Okay. So let's just avoid that argument. You vote for who you vote for. I vote for who I vote for. All right. I disagree. Obviously. Obviously. Um, well, I agree and I disagree. I of think course, because I made the, a very good point. Right. I think the very first conversation to have is how important politics are to each individual person when you begin that relationship. Mm-hmm. Because some people have an active role in in politics where politics is a part of their yes, life if you're a and protester the change... you need to let your significant other know that you're a protester exactly um now like me personally i don't like going to protest they make me uncomfortable i ain't gonna do that shit but if i were no, i would protest don't make me uncomfortable it's niggas that make me uncomfortable yeah and in that environment <laughs> niggas and niggers and by niggers i mean the unruly white people because i like calling them that because they hate that shit Okay. When they're being unruly and ignorant, yeah, that's what I call it. Hey, that if it fits. Um, but no, I think having the conversation of what type of person you are when it comes to politics, like, do you have opinions, but they really don't matter in your life? Mm-hmm. Or are you active in your politics? So, like, for me personally, there are a couple of things that have to be agreed upon for me. Well, most of politics... Well, actually, let me... Let me back up a little bit. There are some things I think are currently considered political that never should have been in the first place. And if they weren't considered political... Like gay marriage and abortions? Never should have been a part of politics. Yeah. Because what the fuck does that have to do with literally anything political? We've already got that out. Right. So, So with that being excluded, sure. Most of politics, I don't give a fuck if we agree or not. Mm -hmm. I really don't. But because there are so many things having to do with my existence and my well-being and my rights as a human that are currently included in politics they matter a little bit to me also i wasn't shitting on obama if you're 32 and you vote for obama i'm I'm not shitting on you i'm just saying if you vote for the same person under the same stance at 20 that you vote as 30 you haven't progressed a lot the if world all of your policies much. if your yeah. all of your policy agreement is the same at 20 as they are at 30 because I would assume that people vote with their best interest first mm-hmm. and everyone else's interest second. That's me. That's how I vote. So I assume 
that most people vote like that because that's the smart way to vote. That's why you're voting, not like you're not making a math voting for everybody else. Right. It's just one vote. <laughs> I actually think that depends. What? On your honestly just on each individual person. Like if I don't care about politics at all, at all. Let's I don't care about I'm, a no, single this is, this fucking is, this is, this part is of the conversation. This is We're talking about people that actually pay attention to politics. Well, right, but let's say I don't care about politics personally, none of it's going to affect me. However, then you I love what it some hold on. But I them. love someone <laughs> That is going to be personally affected. So I'm. That is the worst way to fucking vote. That is the worst fucking way to vote. Voting in support of somebody else? No, voting in support of somebody else's. Support of somebody else's ideology. You're not voting because you think that this would do good for people. You're voting because that person's voting. Okay. That's what that's the that's the scenario you gave me. Okay. I can see you saying I'm. If I'm a rich white, a, a rich old white guy, you would think I would vote Republican. Mm-hmm. But I'm voting Democrat because I care that much about the lower class. I don't think that's the same as my mm-hmm. husband voted liberal, and I don't know anything about politics, but since he voted liberal, I'm voting liberal. Yeah, no, that's not what it means. That's, I'm, that's I'm, what I, I got out of that. The first one. Yeah, the first one, that makes sense. Yeah. And I, but that's about what you care about first. Is the outside community more important than your household? And I don't think you're wrong for caring about either or first. If your household is the most important fucking thing to you, then let your household be the most important thing to you. Right. If the community is the most important thing to you, then let the community be the most important to you. I'm not going to call you a bad guy for caring about one or the other. And anybody who does that, hold my fucking dick. You're wrong for that. If your priority is the community, let it be your priority. If your priority is your household, let it be your household. And you vote. In whichever way you prioritize which is most important to you. But this is also why I feel like that should be a conversation in relationships because I can't... You have to address what's important within... Exactly. I can't imagine getting married to somebody who's not going to... That's something you should figure out early, though. Right, that's what I'm saying. But you have to have that conversation in the relationship. That means you have to discuss politics in the relationship in order to... At some point. Okay. I'll see... I understand where I need to backtrack. And what that sense is, I had already made the statement that we are married. We're not talking about politics anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that we, we already know we agree on all yeah, the important exactly. stuff. Nothing so else matters. So we're just anymore. doing what we're doing. If you want to go to work and watch Fox News with fucking uh, your, your, your friends, and I want to go home and watch fucking CNN. Not saying that's what I say. Don't put me in a fucking box. You knew what energy you got last time. We'll do this. But... Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> How many people just went? He did tell me to hold his dick last time. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he was swinging with my bitch. <laughs> on his votes. But um, but yeah, no, at that point, at a certain point in your relationship, you do have to realize, like, okay, you this is your... It's not even like who you're going to vote for. Mm-hmm. As if we're married, and I know you care about this, that, and the third, I'm like, oh, she's probably going to vote for them. Right. And you know I swing this way, that, and that. Oh, I'm probably going to vote for that person. But you don't need to have that conversation anymore because you're just going to start arguments that don't need to happen. But then you also have to think about, you may know your partner's opinions on, you know, certain things, but also which has more weight than another. That's something like, you oh shit, they care about this thing and they care about this thing. And now you have two separate candidates. One of them cares about that one and one of them cares about that one where typically one party cares about both. You're playing like... Look, smart people. I'm gonna put this like this: you're 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 saying that this is the smart people vote for a candidate off of one uh, policy. Some people only care about smart one. Smart people don't vote for a candidate off of one policy. What smart motherfucker do you know said this guy said pro choice and now I'm gonna go with it? It's probably a lot of women. It's who did not that. a lot. They're dumb. <laughs> Why? Think think about it. Think about because women then and happens, their rights then to what choose happens, what to do with their bodies you and how why? passionately they because feel about that. And you think they're going to vote for somebody who's going to take that away from them? No, 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 no. The argument is not... If, you, if you're basing that off of this person says pro-choice, so I'm going to vote for him and nothing else plays a factor. You know what happens when you have two pro-choice motherfuckers running? <laughs> Flip a coin. That's it. You're flipping a fucking coin. Because it doesn't matter at that point. So you're looking at, like, yeah, people have... People will make an argument for, like, I don't like this guy's policy about this, but his other seven policies I agree with. Right. 
So there, there's it's, it's if you're if you're voting for a person off of one policy, you're a fucking idiot. You should be allowed to vote because like it's your right, but like dude, just be better. Just I be better. I will give that the additive of if all of the other policies are either agreeable or don't matter to you. So like let's say Let's say I'm a gay boy. But then what happens when you have two, this one policy? If this guy's pro choice, I'm only using pro choice because it's just convenient for the conversation. Uh, if you just have this guy that's uh, pro choice and this guy that's pro choice, and you don't care about shit else that what do they say, how do you depend on which one you pick? How do you decide which one you pick? You walk in and flip a coin. Nigga, that's a problem. <laughs> Voters should never be a flip the coin kind of situation. Mm. I mean, we only ever have Should two parties be. anyway, so lesser it's a flip or fucking That's point. where the whole argument of lesser... I, I hate having that fucking argument because, again, I'm a swing voter. I can vote either way. It's a lesser two evils game for me. I'm never... If a fucking candidate comes in and I agree with 100% of what they're doing, I haven't done my research. Mm-hmm. That's that or we're in the matrix. That. Facts. So, if I'm looking for... If I agree with six out of seven... Or versus five out of seven, the six out of seven is the lesser of two evils. I'm not saying they're both fucking evil. Right. I'm just saying I agree with this side slightly more than that side. That's what the phrase means. So, but if you're fucking one and one on both sides, you're an idiot voter. Do you think it's fair to have uh, like political deal-, deal breakers in a relationship? Like actual politics. So like right now, yes, right now in politics is. I, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. If I'm pro-choice and. Uh, 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 so that's what I was going to say. Remove the ones that shouldn't even be political conversations. Yeah. Pro-choice. Uh, I mean, pro-choice and pro-life. Um, so remove gay those. Gay marriage. Yeah. Remove those that. Are, have to get out. All Outside your social of- justice type things. All of that. I'm talking actual political policies. Like where your taxes should be applied. How much you should pay in taxes and where those taxes should go. Y'all need to move. Those are like state based and like <laughs> based off your marriage and but shit. E- like, but even even still, do you think it's fair or right or whatever for someone to say, you know what? My my boyfriend actually doesn't think that it is right or fair for this much in taxes to go to public schools. If that's not your interest, that's not, if that's not what you... I mean, come on, now, we're, now we're talking about if that's your person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. I don't care if that nigga eats his fucking boogers. If you find one thing that you don't like, leave that nigga. That's the kind of energy I'm on these days. Yikes, all But right. that's like real shit. If you find something that you don't see you coping with in the future, deuces. Also, shout out to my exes. <laughs> and for the episode 32 plug of the week... <laughs> <laughs> this one actually super shout out to Shada Great. She yeah. saved my ass on this one today. So, but uh, returning plug of the week, Shada Great. She was on episode twenty two. Uh, it is what it is, featuring Fia with her song "Black Men," and now she's coming back with another song. Oh, y'all are waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> Nope. I think it's everybody. I think it's everybody. Else. Else. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, swimming with the sharks is daily. I'm watching my movements. That nigga said I'm by myself. I told him, watch me do it. Worry, it set a nigga back. But time to keep on moving. And when they try to break you down, you show them you ain't losing. And keep your eyes up on the prize and make lucrative moves. And when you lose, it ain't a loss. It came with lessons too. And yet, a mind to hold you back, you gotta fight that. Looking for a way out, but the devil swinging right back. Hey, I can't say that I ain't fall for the lie. But everything I did, survival was the mission in mind I thank my brother cause he showed me it was hustle inside He told me fear was not an option when time ain't on your side He told me give a dog a bone and he'll swallow his pride So don't be chasing all these niggas letting love rule your life And yeah, I'm out here and I'm setting the tone Forget that clout chasing, bitch, I do this shit on my own And I ain't riding coattails, I'm out here building my throne 
position in my crown for the win, my wave is been grown. If competition find a way, I help it find its way home. And if the ops is looking for me, lead them right to my zone. I guess the devil won again, cause I ain't dying alone. I take a bitch nigga with me, trying to take me from home. Prepare myself for karma, cause the past won't leave me alone. And thinking all the shit I've been through, could've been dead and gone. Dead and gone, dead and gone. The past I've been living, yeah, 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 it's dead and gone. I'm a stay fresh and I'm a stay young. Feel it. The realest gangsta I know, but you still walk in the spirit. Told me life gon' get at you, so just embrace it, don't fear it. Gotta be real about your actions, better mean that's sincere. Hey, take my words and make a caption, about to make me a million. Still screaming free will, like my Brody from Philly. Now they didn't got them in themselves, and I just wish you could hear them. Had to get it by myself, know the real players gon' feel me. Dead and gone, my past is dead and gone. Had to let go of all that pain, it was too hard to carry on. Gotta make it for my mama, so I gotta stay strong. Had to listen to my gut, whether it was right or wrong. Can't take me out my song. I was meditating quietly, praying on my own. No, ain't no one that's hottest. I just had to set the tone. They gon' love me for my honesty. They owe me dead and gone. Dead and gone, dead and gone. The past I've been living, yeah, 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 it's dead and gone. I'ma stay fresh and I'ma stay on. Dead and gone, dead and gone. The past I've been living, yeah, 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 it's dead and gone. I'm flexing, yeah, I'm moving on. And for the episode 32 plug of the week is Progressions by Shy the Great. I only didn't say that name because I wanted to make sure y'all are actually paying attention trying to figure out what the fuck is the name of the song. Good message. Good fucking song. Make sure you check her out. Should be tagged in the... We'll add it to the Plug of the Week playlist as always. And make sure you check it out on SoundCloud because, you know, it's the only thing you're going to get from Marathon of Wolves from SoundCloud. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the SoundCloud listeners that did move over to another platform now. Appreciate y'all. Um, still listening to the podcast, getting your intake. Because, you know, if you're not listening to us on SoundCloud, you know, let's just go to Pandora Music because we're on that now too. Mm-hmm. Also, fuck iHeartRadio. Um... <laughs> But shout out to Shadow Gray for that dope ass track, and shout out for her for that hookup that she did for me. Super uh, dope. Super dope. Um, as far as I saw that guy, you got any positive notes or anything about enough before we get out of here? Focus on these bitches' love languages, guys. Most of them really do want food, um, but that's not every woman's love language. So pay attention to what she actually wants, but it's still mostly food. That's when they want. That's when they know when they want something to eat. All right, so you, you ignorant bitches that just listen to that shit. You have five love languages, okay? Acts of service, receiving gifts, words of affirmation, uh, physical touch, and what's the last Quality one? Quality time. Quality time. Food is not one of those. Food okay? is the first two. Oh my fucking god! What? <laughs> that's two love languages in one. So how is it the first two? You said you said uh, acts of service, the fact that you're either bringing me or cooking me food, and second okay. is a All gift. Right, you're giving fair, me food. Fair, fair. So if your love language is acts of service, and I build you a fucking bookshelf, but you starve, you better be fucking happy because I gave you your fucking love language. So with all that being said, tell my millennials. Being your age is a sin, and no one wants to hear your woes. And to everybody else, it's been another episode of the Ass and Wolves podcast. Peace. Oh